Hello and welcome to my new video today talking about setting psychological boundaries. Now previously I talked about learning to love yourself and how important it was that you validate and respect your own emotions. And now that you're able to get that, now we can talk about applying it to the concept of boundary setting, both conceptually and behaviorally. Now, the term boundaries is kind of popular these days. People throw that psychological word around, and I'm not so sure they know what that means, but I want to define it and make it really clear to you today through this video. Because it's another example of a psychobabble. You know, what does this really mean? You know, set your boundaries. Somebody hears that that's not kind of psychologically savvy. They go, what, what's that? Boundaries, you know. Now, we all know boundaries or borders between two countries. You know, we, we're clear about that. And what happens when those boundaries aren't respected, then people go to war, and that's not so pretty. And it's difficult. But this is especially true boundaries when it comes to intimate relationships. We need to respect the boundaries there just as much because when couples or individuals are not respected, then they have resentments and conflicts and all kinds of things. And when people aren't able to set boundaries, then they feel victimized and powerless. So boundaries is a lot to do with your own personal power. It's the way that you prevent people from manipulating and controlling you and using you and dominating you. They can't do any of that if you're able to define a, a boundary between you and them that they hopefully will respect. If they don't, then they t that tells you something about whether you want to be in that relationship or not. Because without establishing boundaries, you become suffocated. You feel squashed. You feel like you can't express yourself. And like a lot of people are afraid of these days is losing themselves in an intimate relationship. Well, when you know how to set boundaries and you're comfortable with that, you won't have that fear of losing yourself so much because you'll know how to do it. So let's make it simple. Boundary setting has to do with two emotions particularly. And make it simple so it's not all that complicated. One emotion is comfortable, you feel comfortable, and the other one is the opposite. You're uncomfortable, You're either comfortable or not. So when you can identify those two emotions and you validate them and you respect them yourself, then, then you won't lose yourself. That's how you set the boundary by drawing that line and saying, no, I'm not comfortable doing that. Because people are hitting on you all the time with agendas. They want something. And if you're not able to pay attention to your emotions there, you, that's how you lose yourself very easily. And especially people who aren't sober, you know, definitely can't set boundaries. So that's an important thing as well. Another metaphor I like to use is um, if any of you skied or snowboard or something like that, if you can imagine this, when you're going down a mountain, really fast on two sticks or one board, you better know how to do one thing important. Stop. You better know how to put the brakes on because if you don't feel the confidence in that, you're not going to want to let go to the pull of gravity, which is the thrill of the whole thing, having done it many times. Because when you start to get uncomfortable skiing, you have the confidence that you can stop, you can put the brakes on, and, you know, and then you can let go again until you get uncomfortable and you put the brakes on. So you let go and then you hold back and you stop and then you can do that. Now if skiers or people wanting to ski who do not know how to set the brakes, so to speak, they don't know how to stop well, they don't have confidence, they ski very slow and rigid and they fight the pull of gravity, which is very exhausting if you've ever done that. It doesn't take long and you're tired. So people who know how to ski have that ability. Now, the equivalence of this, when I'm, the metaphor here, is what you hear people say, falling in love. You know, they talk about, I'm falling in love with this person. And it's kind of like they're ah, losing themselves and going over the mountain, a lot like a skier. And they're afraid that if they fall in love with somebody, that they will lose themselves because they don't have good confidence at setting boundaries. So when you know that, you can say, no, I'm not comfortable with that or not. You can let yourself go to a relationship. You can become emotionally invested and vulnerable. And if you're not feeling comfortable, then you can do the opposite and stop it. But falling in love could be pretty you know, lethal to your sense of self if you don't know how to put boundaries in place. So it's very similar. Another thing that people do because of their fear of being intimate or being involved 
and not having confidence about boundaries is that they get involved with people who aren't really accessible. They're not really available, but they still have a relationship with them. Sometimes I've seen couples where the one person lives in New York and the other person lives in San Francisco. I mean, they have 3,000 miles of boundaries, so to speak. But when they get into Chicago and get together, it's really incredible. They can really let themselves go because they have that safety valve that they know at some point soon they'll be going back to their respective places. Which, you know, it works, but it's, to me, not very fulfilling because you have to travel and it's not, like, consistent. Some people also do that with um, getting involved with someone who's married, you know, an extramarital affair. And, the, and I've seen lots of people who do this, and they, you know, they'll complain to me about how they don't get to be with the person at the holidays or something. And, and the person keeps saying that they'll get divorced, and, and, but they don't. And you say, well, why do they stay with this person? Why don't they just you know, leave them? Well, that relationship is very safe if they don't have confidence boundaries because they know it can't go anywhere. All they can enjoy is that moment, that time that that's, they steal away, but then they get to space again. So there's no commitment. And then the most real common thing that I've heard most of my career is people who become sexually involved when they're not comfortable. They do it when they're not comfortable. They haven't established a boundary. How many women in this country are sexually involved with their partners when they really don't want to? They, they just, they don't, they, for whatever reason, they don't want to, but they do it anyway. They don't listen to their emotion of being uncomfortable, and they do something that they're not really into. And then what do you think happens? What happens is they start to resent sex. They resent the context of being sexual because, in a sense, they lose themselves. And I kind of say that's like, welcome to a psychological prison. And it's not very pleasant, and it's very unsatisfying. So again, boundaries is the way to allow yourself to be truly intimate with someone or not. It's not like you lose yourself. You, you, know, you can succeed there when you have that confidence. Another place where boundaries become critical is in parenting. How many people I see have trouble setting boundaries between themselves and their children, you know, and especially teenagers, because teenagers are always wanting something. They want to go do something. They're always pushing the boundaries of what they can do or not do. And parents are always put in that position of saying, okay, you can go, or no, you can't go. But some parents, because they aren't able to set their own boundaries, or because of fear, always just let the kid do what they want to do, because they're afraid they won't like them or they'll be mad at them, or whatever their fear is. And they lose their parenting ability, which really doesn't help the child, the teenager. Um, having raised two teenage girls, you know, I had to set a lot of boundaries with them. And they always were wanting to do stuff. And one classic example was one of my daughters graduated high school, and she wanted to have a celebration with her girlfriends in Mexico. Sounds nice. The problem with it was that I wasn't comfortable with it. I wasn't comfortable with her being in a foreign country as a minor. just didn't feel right to me. And she argued, you know, classic arguing. You know, Dad, that's not fair. All my girlfriends get to go. Why can't I go? You know, pushing me, you know, come on, come on, using logic. In, and I finally said, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not comfortable. Now, where I would be comfortable is if you went to Honolulu. That would work for me. And that's where she eventually ended up going. But that process, if I just said, okay, you can go, it's no respect. I'm not taking care of myself, and I'm not teaching her that life has its boundaries. You can't always get what you want. You can ask. You can try. I'm okay with that. But, but not the pushing. Not the pushing. Of course, now she's a lawyer and argues with the government, and so it kind of worked out career-wise, that talent she had. Another important place to create boundaries is between a husband and wife and their children. Because some parents don't do that. They're like, it's all one. It's what we call in psychology a mesh. They're all meshed together. The parents don't have their time and space, and the children have theirs, and that the two don't always go together. It's not always together. There's a boundary between the parents' relationship and the children. And that's critical because if the children dominate the couple's relationship, in that sense, take up all their time, the couple has no time, to have an intimate relationship themselves. And then they tend to fall apart and drift. I'm sure you've heard of the empty nest syndrome, which I'll talk about sometime later. 
But when the children go away to college or wherever, then the couple doesn't have much of a relationship because the children dominated it. So that's another critical place. Also, be the balance between work life and home life. How many times you hear that homework balance thing? Keeping boundaries, okay, like this is now our personal time, work doesn't intrude because some people let work take over all the time because they need the money and their personal life just gets thrown down the drain and then they have the money but then they don't have the family life because they end up getting divorced. So it kind of backfires on people. Especially important in terms of developing an intimate relationship it empowers you. It is um, incredibly powerful. So I hope you understand what it means now and that you can apply it in your own personal life, comfortable, uncomfortable, and draw those lines and take care of yourself. You'll truly love yourself when you do. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Subscribe. Bye-bye.